By now you should realize that PySpark can be used for everything you want to do in your day-to-day -day tasks. I rarely run into a situation where there is not a function available for what I want to do in Spark. But what if there really is no way to achieve what I want to do with PySpark? Well, my first advice would be to really think about how you approach the problem you have. Maybe uh, you would do this or that in Pandas, which you can't do in PySpark. However, maybe there's a way to achieve the same goal by using PySpark differently. Maybe you can use a join instead of running a certain calculation. But what if you really need to leave Spark? Well, there are multiple options available. The two most common ones are user-defined functions and transforming your Spark data frame to a Pandas data frame. Let's first discuss user-defined functions or UDFs. With a UDF, you basically define a normal Python function, which you can then use inside PySpark. So why not do that all the time? Well, remember that Spark is written in Scala. And you might create commands in Python, but in the end, what will happen is that your code gets translated into Scala and that is optimized by the optimization engine. Hence, the code you write does not run one-to-one -one on your Spark cluster. More specifically, when you define a Python user-defined function, what happens is that on every worker, a Python process gets spawned, which processes the data residing on that machine. As you can imagine, data leaving Spark and going into Python has disastrous effects on performance. And this is exactly why leaving native PySpark should always be your very last resort. Additionally, remember that no matter which library you use, either Python, Scala, or the R library, your code will always run with the same performance since everything gets translated to the same Scala code. But this is not true for user-defined functions. Python UDFs run in Python and Scala UDFs run in Scala. And since Scala is faster than Python, you'd have a performance boost when using Scala. And after this initial warning, let's have a look at how to use UDFs. For this, we will load our Titanic data frame again. So we're gonna say Titanic is spark read.format CSV. Because it's a CSV file, then we're gonna give some options. Let's say separator is a comma. We do have a header. And we wanna infer the schema. And it is located on our local file system, home spark titanic.csv. All right. So let's just assume that we want to transform the name of a passenger into uppercase and that there does not exist a function to do that. Now, of course, there does exist a function for that, but for demonstration purposes, we just assume that there is no function. So. Uh, we're just going to have a look at the data frame again, and we want to convert this column name to uppercase letters. And we just assume that there does not exist a function to transform a string to uppercase letters. Now, we can tackle this issue by defining a user-defined function and then applying that function on the name column. Scala, which is powering Spark, is a strongly typed language, and we always need to tell Scala which type to expect. And for this, we are first going to import the different types available like so. So we're going to say import pyspark.sql.types st. Great. So just as a remember, we ran import pyspark.sql.types st. And now under t, we have available all the different types for uh, Spark. Okay, next we uh, just define our function like every other Python function. So this is gonna be the function that should transform the string to uppercase letters. So we can just say, let's call it to upper, takes a string. So, and what it does is it just returns that string in uppercase letters. Well, that was pretty easy. Next, we need to register this function as a user-defined function on our Spark cluster. And for this, we need to import the PySpark functions and then use the UDF function within it. And the UDF function takes two arguments. The first uh, argument is the function we want to register, and the second argument is the return type of that function. So we're gonna, first we're gonna import pyspark.sql.functionsf, like we always do. And now we register our to upper function as a UDF. So we create a new function, which is UDF underscore to upper. And that is basically just f dot UDF. So we're gonna use the UDF function. Then we the first argument is the function we want to register as UDF, which is to upper. 
And the second argument is the return type of that function. And it always returns a string. So we say, well, we want to have a type and that should be the string type. And don't forget the opening and closing um, uh, braces. All right. We can now use that UDF like every other function in PySpark. So let's solve the problem we had earlier. So we say Titanic, we're gonna create a new column, which is called name underscore upper. And that should just be UDF to upper on the name column. All right, then we're just gonna select name and name underscore upper. And then we show the results. And there you are. Well, that worked. However, always remember that this should be your last resort. I rarely use UDFs and most of the time I only use those as a preliminary solution. After some time, I might come up with a different way to tackle my problem without leaving Spark. However, there's also another approach. Um, you could transform your Spark data frame into a Pandas data frame. Note that this will take your entire Spark data frame and put it only on your driver node. If the data set is larger than the memory you have on your driver node, you will get a memory overflow error because the data set is larger than the memory. And creating a Pandas data frame from a Spark data frame is pretty easy. As an example, let's convert the Titanic data frame to a Pandas data frame. So we're gonna say Titanic. Uh, let's clear the screen here. We're gonna say ti Titanic underscore PD. We're just gonna take the Spark data frame and we're gonna use the to pandas method on it. And this is now a totally normal pandas data frame. And to show this, let's transform the name into uppercase by using a pandas function. So we're gonna use the titanic underscore pd. And then there we're gonna use the name column. And we're just gonna transform it to uppercase by using the pandas functionality. As you can see, that works. But remember, this is only a solution if your data fits into a single machine. If you have big data, this will not be a solution. You can also transform a Pandas data frame into a Spark data frame again. And this is also pretty easy. So let's retransform that Titanic uh, data frame uh, to a Spark data frame. So we're gonna say Titanic underscore Spark is gonna take the Pandas data frame. Oh, sorry. Uh, and we do this by saying spark.create data frame. Uh, we, as an argument, we just give it the pandas data frame. And this is now a Spark data frame, which you can see by running the show method. So on this data frame, we're gonna use a Spark method. We're gonna use the show method and that worked. So last but not least, you can also use the collect method. And this will take your Spark data frame and transform it into a list of rows. And these rows pre act pretty much like tuples. So let's collect the name at the fair columns of our Spark data frame and then collect it. So we're gonna call it Titanic underscore collect. And this will be Titanic select name at the fair column. And then we collect it. And we can now use this Titanic underscore collect in a for loop because it basically acts uh, like a list of tuples. So we can say for x in Titanic underscore collect. What we want to do is, well, we're going to print name and then the first element of for every tuple. And then we're going to print fair colon and then the string of the second element of that tuple. Um, yeah. And as I said, after running the collect method, you can access the different columns by index values. So since name was the first column we selected and fair was the second column, we can access the name in a for loop by taking the zeroth element and the fair column by taking the first element. With this knowledge, you can work with your data on the driver node. However, remember that this should always be your last result. If you can, solve your problem while staying inside the Spark cluster.